Hey everyone, I'm Joanna, a Venezuelan-American comedian, TV writer, actor, and professional neurotic. And I'm Jenny, a Cuban-American comedic actor, writer, and content creator who is everybody's abuela. Okay, so Jenny, the reason why we started doing this podcast is because we always felt like we weren't 100% anything. We're kind of like a mix and jumble of a bunch of things. And in terms of identity, I I never know exactly what to say. I say Venezuelan-American, but then sometimes I feel like 100% Venezuelan. Sometimes I feel 100% American. Sometimes I'm like, you know, like a mix of mold or whatever. <laughs> what is that? What, what was that accent, Joanna? <laughs> it's honestly the worst thing I've done. I might get canceled for, a for that. For a second, <laughs> you sounded like you were trying to attempt the Miami accent. I think that's Hilaria Baldwin. <laughs> You know, that's actually spot on. The cucumbers. Cucumbers. The cucumbers. Cucum- how did it's... you say the cucumbers? How do you say this? And today's episode is about language. But it's it's interesting because what happened to Hilaria Baldwin where she like did not know how to say a certain word. Like that happens to me all the time, except I don't have an accent. So people just think I'm dumb. Like I'll be like, oh man, what's the word for that? I'm, I'm pointing to like a lamp and they're like, lamp? And I'm like, sorry, I forgot the word for lamp. <laughs> it just sounds like I am not smart. But maybe that's and why I, she did the accent. <laughs> it's of course you're able to, <laughs> if I had an accent, everyone would be like, oh, what is it, uh? she's just trying her best. And when, <laughs> since I don't have an accent and you don't have an accent in English either or in Spanish, Spanish and I don't have an accent in Spanish either. I mean, my accent is from Venezuela. Like, yeah. W- when I have these gaps of of under of of words, when I have gaps of how to communicate, yeah, I I feel like the dumbest person. Like, I feel like I'm perceived as a dumb person. <laughs> I can see that. I mean, for me, a lot of the time, it has to do with words like "mira que fresca está la perra," and they're like, "What does fresca mean?" And I'm like, "Fresh." Fresca. And then they're like, your dog is fresh. <laughs> like, did, wait, you mean when you, you just talk, bathed? when you talk, t- <laughs> when you talk in Spanish and people ask you what you're saying? I just naturally talk in Spanglish. It's a lot of like Cubanisms, Miamiisms, and then I forget how to say certain things in English because mm-hmm. I only know how to express it in Spanish. I feel like the only language I speak fluently is Spanglish, which isn't a language. It's like the illegitimate bastard child of two languages. Yeah. But like, I, I, I truly, and you know, I went to an American school in Venezuela. So I was always surrounded. And I feel like you have the same background because you're from Miami. Mm-hmm. I literally grew up being able to, to switch yep. at any point. Like, Hola, ¿cómo estás? Well, I was ahorita in math class y el profesor was just like freaking out porque yo y que I like turned in la tarea and he was like, ¿qué te pasa? And I was like, ¿por qué no te relax? And that was like normal. Like that was a, that was just a way I could speak. Yeah. Because that, that was just how everyone around me spoke. And then when I moved here and, and, and like I, I moved everywhere. Like I lived here as a kid, then I moved back to Venezuela. So like mm. when I was in environments where it was 100% either Spanish or 100% either English, like, I realized how much I used the other language as a crutch. Miami is a bubble, right? So I feel like if if you were to give Spanglish as a language and, and assign it to a city in the United States, it would be Miami. <laughs> because mm-hmm. I agree. That is the number one language spoken. You would think Spanish. One could argue that. I worked many retail jobs. Y casi todo mundo. Here I go. See, look what I just did. <laughs> y casi todo el mundo spoke to me in Spanish. <laughs> also, you didn't even say, y casi todo el mundo. You're like, casi todo el mundo. <laughs> yes. Yes, Cubans eat up words like Pac-Man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, casi todo el mundo would speak Spanish, but that was like a very common way of speaking it still is you go to miami today and that's how everyone talks english spanish english spanish and then the combination of both so a lot of these words aren't even real words i am of the opinion i swear in i don't know two centuries it's going to be like oh uh i'm fluent in english spanish spanglish uh and i I feel like languages because of uh, spanglish like i feel like we are 
people are not just one thing anymore. No. You know, we live in a highly globalized world yep. and people are speaking more one language at home, one language at work, a mix of both with friends. And I think Spanglish is going to continue to foment itself as I think a fixture of American culture. I think it's going to become a language. I agree. <laughs> I, really do. I agree. And I am for it. I'm for it because there's nothing like cursing in Spanish and there's nothing like explaining how to do a task in English. <laughs> yeah. I certainly can't explain any single task in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> like when I, <laughs> when I get like, okay, this is a true story. Mm -hmm. So when, when I, I went to Spain like two years ago and, um, I, I love audio guides. Mm. I love audio guides. Every time I go to a museum, I'm like, mm, get me that audio guide, honey. There's nothing like someone whispering in my ear some facts while I walk around and look at art. Like, mm. that's my porn, mm. okay? Mm. So I'm like, I'm in Spain. Obviously, <laughs> I'm going to get the Spanish audio guide. And for the life of me, I could not follow. Like, it, <laughs> it was like it was, it was was so bizarre, dude. It'd be like, ahora mira este fresco. Eh, arriba, eh, abajo en la oscuridad de donde uno encuentra vosotros lo, lo, lo que uno intenta en el amor donde el corazón late. And I'm like, what? Nope. And I don't know what. And then I started doing English. I was like, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm doing English. Like, and I remember I'd go up to the woman and be like, Disculpa, señorita. Este, sí, eh, un audio guide, por favor. Ah, eh, en español. Yo, no, 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 in English. And in English, it would be like, this fresco, 1492, chiaroscuro. That's like, it was just so clear. Like, what? And, it's, like, it, it, and you would, Jenny, you would compare the English and Spanish, like, uh, como que audio piece of the guides. Like, and the Spanish one would be six minutes. And the English one would just be two. And I'm just like, oh there's something... There's something, like, some languages are better at things than others. Can you imagine Ooh. if Spanglish was a real language and you'd be like, taxes? Every Everything is in English when you do taxes. Expressing your love? We'll just use a bunch of Spanish words for that. I mean, it's why I suck at Spanish language interviews. I think it's because I don't know how to explain what the hell I do in Spanish. You have to get technical and talk about mm -hmm. los... I just learned redes sociales. Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't even know if I'm saying it right, you know? So I'm like, yeah, social media platform. We talk about digital. Anything that has to do with influencer life, I don't know how to explain it in Spanish or even talking about character development or filmmaking. But do you think, <laughs> and I don't know if this is what happens to you, Jenny, but I feel like for me, um, I had to, when I moved to the States mm -hmm. and I started speaking in Spanish, mm -hmm. Um, people started like making fun of the way that I would speak. Like they'd be like, <laughs> "Oh my god, you're so funny!" And like, <laughs> "Cómo está la agua?" And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> what? And like you don't pronounce any s's, and like your words are weird. The word for banano isn't cambur. So I started realizing in like a pretty dramatic like way that the way that I spoke Spanish wasn't the norm. Like English for me and you. Mm -hmm. The way that we speak it, it, it is like general, it's just general English everyone can understand. And every yeah. word we use, like straw doesn't have 14 ways, 14 iterations it's just straw. in English. There's 14 iterations of straw in Spanish. And the word for straw in Mexico means huge dump in Colombia. The word for straw in Colombia means little jack off in Mexico. The word for straw in Venezuela means... What is it, Pitillo? Tiny dick. I think we just did this on purpose. America. I think we're always like, at war with each other. <laughs> it's all, it's always like the way that we each speak Spanish, I think, represents our identity really cleanly. Yeah. Like you speak in a very Miami way yep. in Spanish. I speak in a really Venezuelan way. But in my English, I people are like, are you from the Midwest? <laughs> from like oh minnesota people think I'm, an, I'm a from? new yorker they're like are you an italian new yorker <laughs> really yeah all oh the God, time i get Lady mistaken Gaga. i didn't realize how unique my the miami accent is until i moved out west mm -hmm. to los angeles and a lot of people tend to be confused even 
even, you know, some of my characters have like a really thick Miami accent, right? Like Larissa. And she's like the extreme version of what the Miami accent is. Yeah. Which is like, oh my God, like, stop it. <laughs> and when I've done some videos that end up crossing beyond my audience, a lot of comments from people were like, why is she making fun of the Indian accent? What? Yes. People were like, what is this racist? <laughs> Wait. Like, what is this racist shit? Um, why is she talking like that? And they, they didn't understand. And it's because a lot of people, unless you really spend time in Miami, mm -hmm. actual Miami, mm -hmm. not South Beach for a week, they're, <laughs> they're not going to really realize what this accent is. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't really exist elsewhere. Yeah, it's... It, you know, I, I always say this in, in a lot of interviews. It's something my dad told me a, a long time ago, which is a fish doesn't know it's in water, right? And I, I that stuck with me because mm. we don't understand our idiosyncrasies, especially with language and accents, until we are confronted with, a, with an environment that that's not the norm. And... Mm -hmm. For for me, it's the same thing that I was saying before. I didn't think Venezuelans had an accent until I left and realized that we butcher every S like a serial killer. <laughs> and another thing that like I I also learned is, you know, I I feel very attached to Spanish as a form of my identity in in many senses because I think that a lot of times uh Latin identity is questioned. So it it feels like I don't know if this happens to you. I'm in co I'm I feel like I'm in constant battle to prove that I am Latin enough. Um, and for me, my Spanish is sort of my calling card for me to show like this is my identity. I'm from Venezuela, and before mm -hmm. and and in a lot of VO jobs, I'd have to like sort of take it away and, and and make this weird amalgam of a Spanish accent, which is like a mix of like a fake Mexican accent that you only hear on The Simpsons, plus like mm -hmm. NPR, plus like commercials. And that's the Spanish that I'd be forced to say. Like that's the Spanish that I'd be forced to do auditions with. And I'm sure like, Buenas tardes. Yeah, yeah. Acá estamos en la bellísima casa de las flores. Hoy tendremos que... Like, or... I don't know, every shampoo, shampoo commercial, like, Herbal Essence, el mejor shampoo para tu cabello. And I don't speak like that, right? And I don't think anybody... I don't either, speaks. which is why I don't book these. No, but no, no Latino speaks like that. And that is the Spanish that is used in all of commercials and, and everything, in everything. Yeah. Because it's yeah. It, it holds no identity, so it can be catered to anyone. But I feel like we're emerging, we're coming into a new world where, mm -hmm. where, and we've seen it in how we make content, Jenny. The more specific yeah. we get with our identity, the more it resonates. So the more, than, you know, the more you, the more you speak like you, the more you, you sort of throw yourself into that Miami identity, the more people see themselves reflected in you. Even if they're not like, I always felt reflected in your work, even though I never lived in Miami. Likewise. And that's what. That's what the current battle is when it comes to representation in television and film, mm -hmm. because it's people like us, content creators, are proving that authenticity and specificity really works, you know. But uh, when it comes to TV and film, they still think, oh, it's not global enough. Like you have to make it kind of one note mm -hmm. for everyone to get it. And it's, I don't think that's the way. I don't think that works. <laughs> no, I don't so think I really it works either. We do. Yeah. And even in voiceover, anytime I'm told, you know, can you neutralize your Spanish? I'm like, no. And it's not because I'm stubborn. I just haven't taken those classes. I am I sound extremely Caribbean. And I say, look, I'm going to give you who I am. And if they like it, then great. And I, I honestly wish I could hear varying latino accents in video games and animation mm -hmm. instead of the generic stuff that they think works because <laughs> the generic stuff just goes straight over my head because i'm like oh that's a that you know what that was 12 dudes in suits saying we need to tap the hispanic market how do we do that mm -hmm. make it sound <laughs> as yeah, generic as it's possible boring is what it is it's boring it's boring <laughs> and like 
you know, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like right now we have, especially like in marketing and in television and in this, it's like, oh, we have English market, we have Spanish market. And I'm yep. really interested to see how maybe, and I think we, I mean, we see it in our podcast right now, we will fully lean on Spanish in some sentences. And it's not something that needs to be explained because it is part of identity. And it it is truly a part of the way that we speak. And I think, yes, I, you know, I would, I cannot wait. And uh, it's kind of cringy when they try and do the Spanglish in like commercials and all they say is like, mijo. <laughs> Yeah, they don't know where to insert it. And you're just like, oh, God, please hire an actual bilingual <laughs> Spanglish speaker. Can we please improvise? You know, can we please <laughs> improvise like a dish soap scene, like a dish soap commercial that they try to do Spanglish and a generic accent? Please, oh, right now. Oh, my God. Please, Jenny. You actually are a lot better at the generic accent okay, when I can... try to do it. Wait, why don't you do the abuela? You do the abuela, okay? And I'm like your granddaughter who doesn't know how to wash dishes, okay? Oh, perfect. That's great. Okay. That's fantastic. Ay, oh my God. Como que abuela, how do I lavar los platos? Ay, mija, si tú no sabes lavar los platos, no te va a casar. Ay, abuela, <laughs> you're always so quirky. Queso, turkey, turkey. New Dawn <laughs> soap. Take out that grease in two patatas. <laughs> it, it's just like the most cringe-worthy. Cringe. It's Extremely. so cringe. You know, Jenny, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real. So like, when <laughs> I, I, I graduated in high school from Venezuela, and then I went to college in. Uh, Boston and um, I don't know if you know this about me but I look like every girl from Boston <laughs> like you put some yes, like I have seen you you put some North Face <laughs> some a Jansport backpack and just like the aura of <laughs> someone who will freak out over a Burberry scarf and like that's that's what I look like apparently it's that or either Eastern European Jew in a shtetl those are the two <laughs> things I could book just based on how I look so I went, yeah. started school in Boston, and I went to the Latino house, because I was like, oh my god, these are not people. Oh <laughs> Latino house. And I arrived, and I remember this girl was like, oh my god, hi, welcome. Where did, um, this is the Latino house. Um, were, were you looking for the women's study? Oh my god. And I was like, no, 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 eh, I'm from Venezuela. And, and then she was like, oh wow, great. Like, she was very nice. She wasn't, like, confrontational or weird about it. So then I started speaking in Spanish to her, like, sí, bueno, me acabo de mudar hace como tres días, la estoy pasando súper bien acá, pero la verdad es que me hace falta, me urge hablar en español. And she was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I don't speak Spanish. And I was in shock. Hilarious. I was in shock. I was like, we just, we just made assumptions about each other in, like, completely opposite ways. Yes. But for a while, Jenny, and I'm going to be honest with you, I would judge people that didn't speak Spanish who said they were Latino the same way that they would judge me, a white girl, for saying she's Latina, even though I felt identified as una Latina. And well, yeah. I think that, like, we, there's something about Latino culture and that we, like, we keep on trying to revoke the Latino card. It's like... All the time. All the time. And it's like, don't we want more people in her? But group? you can... <laughs> It's a little much sometimes, <laughs> a lot of the time. It's like you can lose your Latino card for simply adding raisins to your picadillo. <laughs> so, yeah, se fue. <laughs> Bye-bye, Latino card. I take it away. <laughs> oh, my God. Jenny, that's so accurate. That's so, like, But I'll... it is. It's so much. I'm sure you saw that firsthand. Oh, my God. Especially when you worked at a major digital media company. The comments section was brilliant. It was so brutal. I mean, yeah. And I remember, I think, oh, I was called a culture vulture all the time, which was such a weird, I was like, well, I kind of like that it rhymes. Um, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, and it's true. There's, there's people that try to, Hilaria Baldwin, try to adhere to cultures that perhaps aren't theirs, but it, we're yeah. in this weird world where we're policing identity, right? We are yes. a bit, and I think some of some of the times it's very much merited, and other times it's what you just said. I think 
one time I was like, oh, Venezuela has this drink called Malta and it, it, it just mm-hmm. tastes like sa- Satan spit. With <laughs> I've had Malta. It's, oh, of course you have. Cubans Cuban. have Malta. Yes. Yeah. I don't like Malta. <laughs> Satan spit. I, I don't like Malta. And I remember saying like in, an, in a radio interview, they were like, bueno, Joana, mira, y entonces, más venezolana que la arepa eres tú. <laughs> Segura te gusta la Malta. <laughs> and I was like, actually, no, I don't, no me gusta la Malta. And they're like, <laughs> and you think you're Venezuelan? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't like one soda. And now you're revoking my no, identity, my God, three generations of Venezuelan. Like, what are you talking about? I cannot with our people. Either you're judged within your own culture. So, like, for me, it would be like, she's not Cuban enough. Look at her. She has no ass. <laughs> right? Because apparently you need an ass to qualify. I love, like, imagine and I'm, and I'm getting here. here. Imagine you, Jenny, going to, like, the Cuban consulate if there was consulate, if <laughs> communism and the Cold War didn't happen. And you were like, hey, I'm just renewing yeah, yeah, my Cuban yeah. passport. And someone was like, we're going to have to have you stand up. Uh, we need to look at your ass just to verify. Truthfully, I, you know, tengo a cuerpo whatsoever of a quote unquote Cuban woman. So that's one. Um, and even the way my Spanish was, a lot of Cubans were coming after me being like, that's not how Cubans really talk. And any little thing, again, from recipe videos to my skin color, to my height, to my culo, all of it was of being it. picked apart. So that's within the culture, right? Mm-hmm. But then, then there comes all the other nationalities. So moving out here, like my sister and I were the only Cubans, uh, Cuban video producers working at Me Too. There's a lot of Mexican producers. And so obviously the uh, cafeteria was chock full of tapatio and every type of salsa picante that you can imagine. And, and I'm not, listen, People like spicy food. Like you don't have to be Mexican to to like spicy food, but it's not really part of our dishes, mm-hmm. right? Like Caribbean dishes. Uh, so my sister and I do not eat spicy. And even our own coworkers were judging us. They're like, what kind of Latinas are you that you don't have spicy? Like they were being real about it too. They weren't just joking around. They were actually appalled <laughs> that we didn't add any kind of hot sauces to our dishes. You know, I you know so when I was appalled, you know when I was appalled and I can say this because our <laughs> producer is Mexican, my my a lot of my family lives in Mexico. I adore Mexico. Mexico it has mm-hmm. the most colorful and deep culture. I'm oh, obsessed yes. with it. But let me tell you something. Their supposed <laughs> sweets are like dust that is just spicy and i'm like this is not a sweet <laughs> this is a condiment and you know well, hasta la fruta they dip it in spices everything has to be like whoa everything has to be like uh, like the the most intense version of itself like a mango but like <laughs> who, who, like a mango that wants to to have a coup against your taste buds like that is <laughs> But you know, when I when I speak, and I don't know if this happens to you, when I speak Spanglish in front of like some of my aunts and uncles, and even my brother, who gives me so much, okay, they're like, really? tienes que hablar español sin inglés si tú quieres ser venezolana, tú no puedes estar mezclando. And I'm like, so they're like purists about it. I'm like, there is no, there's no, there's some words, there's some words that don't exist in Spanish. Like, let, let me pull it up. I have a list. I have a list because people don't believe me. There's one word which is like coming to an agreement. Eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Este, ay, coño. Compromise. The word compromise doesn't exist in Spanish. It just doesn't exist. And the word hmm. for sobremesa, that w- word where it's just the term for when you sit and you talk after you eat, doesn't exist in English. And I think that reflects so much about what is inherent in both cultures <laughs> like in, <laughs> in latin america no one is going to use compromise like in latin america no one is compromising and then in the u.s no one is having fun at the table after they eat like i feel like because language <laughs> comes about obviously language comes about from necessity and yes when, when my brother is like, you know, you're you're depending too much on the two languages. Like, tú tienes que estar como que más hablando en español o en inglés. I'm like, no, 
No, I'm going to speak how I want, especially because there's words that just don't translate. Do you, you tell me the word for empalagar in English. There's no such word for when you have too many churros and you want to die. That doesn't exist. I just think it's fun to be able to speak Spanglish with other bilingual people. Mm-hmm. I agree. Because they, they also speak both languages. And it's just, I think it's fun. I think it's a great way to communicate. But yeah, there's plenty of people who de- I definitely got hate from. Listen, there's always going to be people that are going to be saying that whatever you do is a disgrace to anything. And um, <clears throat> and in our culture, like, it's funny how even the term Spanglish is, like, perceived, like, it's diminishing something. Like, we're, we're diminishing the value of Spanish or we're diminishing the value of English when I think it's it's a representation of living in the hyphen. It's in the, when you mm-hmm. hyphenate something, you're adding you're not taking away. You're literally adding a word. I love that. Mm, it's true. And language is always evolving. But you know what? This just reminded me. Like in in South America, we've, because of how close we are to the States, like a lot of the way that we say words, it's sort of bilingual in nature. Like I say, see these, right? But when I went to Spain uh-huh. once and I went to El Corte Inglés, which is kind of like the Bloomingdale's of Spain, I was like, disculpa señorita, ¿dónde quedan tus CDs? And she was like, los qué? And I'm like, CDs. <laughs> and she's like, no vendemos CDs acá. And I'm like, oh, oh, like the round thing where you play music. And she's like, oh, los CDs. I'm like, oh, oh, come on. Come on, come on. Gloria. Okay, relax. Claro, of course her name is Gloria. Oh my God. I was like, Siempre really? las Gloria what jodiendo. A- context clues. You know, she wanted to make a point that in Spain, Ay, they don't Dios pronounce C, C, they pronounce it C. So that okay, is an cool. example of like rejection <laughs> Of, of, of the merging of cultures. But the term CD, do, like, it comes from compact disc. It doesn't come from, like, compacto disco. It would be DC. Disco compacto. Yeah. So, like, yeah. the, this adherence to, like, purism is, for me, so it just ends up sounding ridiculous. Yes. <sighs> Sorry. How I'm about just... just let people live and <laughs> communicate how they want to communicate? And then you go about your purest life. It's just like in 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 similar no terms. No forcing let, them. Let me live Spanish. my life. <laughs> yeah, just let me laugh. Let me say conflé. <laughs> Jesus. You just said conflé, and yeah. I, you know, I I'd like for the last part of this podcast for us to teach each other <laughs> one word. You know, when you found out that Viva Porub came came from Vicks Vapor Rub. Vicks Vapor Rub. Like my brain exploded into two hundred million pieces. I'm going to teach you one word that I found out is actually an English word that was converted into Spanish. Okay. 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 So in Venezuela, like, not like, so, you know, the word for popcorn is kind of like straw. There's a million different ways of saying it in, in South America. There's like palomita. There's, I don't even know. I don't actually know a single way to say it in Spanish. Oh, well, perfect. Well, I'm going to teach you my way. <laughs> it's the right way. Because it's the Venezuelan okay. way. It's okay. eh, cotufa. Okay, cotufa. cotufa. Only that's only in Venezuela that popcorn is referred to uh, as cotufa. I think maybe in Colombia. Um, you know where it came from? The packaging for the popcorn was like on it. It wasn't even the name of the brand. It just said corn to fry. <laughs> and through with the evolve, like it evolved to from corn to fry to corn to fry cotufa cotufa. So. Our word for popcorn oh is this is just like a slightly massacred version of corn to fry. That is brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. It's brilliant is what it is. Because no one could ever tell. It just sounds like a straight up real word. It's a real word that is also completely just made up from English. It's just stolen. It's just straight up stolen. Oh my god. Well, I have a, a similar one. Show me. And I think, I used to think everyone knew this, but it's just Miami Cubans, apparently. For the longest, so look, I can't say refrigerator in Spanish to save my life. I trip over my tongue <laughs> an embarrassing number of times. So let me attempt. Ref- <laughs> Here I go. Refregida- no. Refrigerador. Look how long it took me. Never again. Okay, so then, 
So then my grandparents always called refrigerators frigidaire. Se abre frigidaire, frigidaire, frigidaire. So it kind of sounds like fridge, frigidaire, fridge. And so again, just like Viva Porru, I thought this is how you say refrigerator in Spanish, frigidaire. It comes from the brand Frigidaire. <laughs> when you found out, were you just like, Oh my god. <laughs> yes. I, lo- I felt Frigidaire. my mind was blown. Frigidaire. But let me tell you what, I can actually say Frigidaire. So you know what? That's what it is. You know what? I think, gonna, I think I'm just going to say that too. I think I'm going to say it now too. The blah, blah, blah. I can't. I can't do Frigidaire. it. Can't. Frigidaire. And so, and then, and then I made a video about it. So a lot of people were like, oh, we call it Nevera. Mm-hmm. We call it all these different... Um, I'm forgetting this other one, this other way to say it. I don't know how Venezuelans say it. Nevera. Chileans probably call it like La Maletica de Santa or something weird like that because Chileans have the weirdest name. La Maletica de Santa. Una cosa like out of this world, you know? Bueno, everybody. Gracias for escuchar our nuevo podcast. (laughs) Please, uh, uh, Remember to subscribe. Es totalmente gratis. Gratis. How do you say subscribe in Spanish? That's another word I, w- I don't even know. Suscri- suscribirse. Suscribirse. Su- su- suscri- That's my very Venezuelan way of saying it. Suscribirse. See, <laughs> sí, is it su- subscribirse or su- su- suscribirse? This is, this is the way that I would say it if I was auditioning for like a commercial. Suscribirse. And this is the way that I would actually say it. Suscríbete. <laughs> Suscríbete eh, y por el comment eh, below. Remember to like, comment, share. I thought you said chair, but you meant chair. <laughs> chair, the singer, chair. Tell her about soon, the podcast. Jenny. I'll talk to you soon, Jenny. Talk I'll annoy you. you very soon. <laughs>